ask you about somebody. Uh, okay. Um, here's the question and here's the visual. Ian, the production of Minor Threats recordings is perfect. Nothing sounds anything like it. All you were spot on. Could you give us a little perspective on uh, on on the two seven inch recordings, you know, uh, how they were recorded, you know, quick, quickly what the circumstances were. Are, are you happy with them in retrospect? Yeah, I think the first record is perfect. You know, I love that. Right. I think I love both records. But that first record, I remember when we record, we recorded Don's studio and it was a four track. And we had this real emphasis on the idea that the bass and the guitar should be like one thing. Practically, it should mm -hmm. just be like everything should be locked in and super tight. And then to and to really to give um and let the so the the singing can really kick off of that you know mm -hmm. um you know I really love like small man big mouth I always just love the way that song sounded and and just the way the again those 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 guys played so well and there's another thing about Minor Threat that was I think of quite a departure for most punk bands certainly in Washington is that one of their early arguments we had. Um, is that Lyle wanted to buy a strobe a strobe tuner, um, yeah. and a strobe tuner was this giant unit that um, yeah. you could actually tune guitars with, and yeah, uh, it cost like hundred and eighty dollars, which at that time was it was a big deal, insane. <laughs> yeah. And I thought he was out of his fucking mind to want to buy a strobe tuner. I was so against it because it didn't seem punk to me at all. Right. But Lyle was like, "I'm going to get a strobe tuner," and he did. And as a result, Meyer Threat was the band that was in tune. Like we were in tune. We tuned our guitars. So if you listen to like live tapes of like SOA or, or other mm -hmm. bands, a lot of times like Meyer Threat's in tune. And other bands, you're not going to hear them. They're just more out, you know. Yeah. Um, so I think we and, and, and excuse me, the Les Paul that yeah, Lyle yeah. is playing is yeah. in tune. In tune. And yeah. the other thing about Lyle is that he plays bar chords for those guitar players out there. But he mm -hmm. plays with all six strings. Mm. Like I play with three strings. Like sure. I, I'm a cheater. But like Lyle plays <laughs> all. Six. Right. Yeah, he plays all six, and he's, um, he was just a, a, he's a great guitar player. And yeah. the uh, and of course we had been, come up watching the Bad Brains, right? And the Bad Brains, their commitment to precision, yeah. and practice. We took the it really seriously. We there. practiced. As much as we could, it was always about like we were gonna, yeah, we were always gonna win the night. That's what we were gonna, we wanted to play. I didn't give a fuck when we played, we could open or close. But if we opened, I feel sorry for the people playing after us. Mm -hmm. If you open and if we closed, and I hope people remember the other bands, that was the way I looked at it. We were, you know, we wanted to be, we wanted to be good, we just wanted to be a good band. So, those, those recording sessions, there, there is one interesting thing about this four track. The way we recorded was drums on one track, bass on a second track, guitars on a third track. And on the fourth track was the vocals, the backing vocals, and mm. very occasional guitar overdubs, maybe. Um, right. So as a result, I couldn't do the vocals live. I had to do – so we had to record the music first. I might do kind of a scratch vocal to make sure that the timing was right. And then it, then when the, we decided that okay, that's a good version, then I would go do – We'd go back in and then I would stand at one mic and the other guys would stand at another mic and we would do the the vocals and the backing vocals. Mm -hmm. um, at at the just, same time, yeah. lead vocals, background vocals. In the same room at the same time. Yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. And the uh, backing vocals were really important for me. Like, it was always, for me, it was always about singing. Like the I want the whole room singing. Uh, like I love the the live side of the sham 69 album, you know, sure. that, like that record, that live side, I just thought, Oh, that's yeah. yeah. Actually, you know, Henry, you, 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 you feel the room, you, you, right. you, feel, you feel the, the ambience and the essence of the room. Absolutely. Right. I want But also every song I wrote, I, I, I want people to, I want them to sing. You know, if you look at my threat stuff, I'm always like, I want people to sing. I want the whole room to sing. And, uh, yeah. you know, actually Henry and I, in November of 79, we came to New York to see sham. We show them at Hurrah with a band called the Reds. I think they were called. That's my, um, it's, called, that's my neighborhood right here. Her, right yeah. here. I live in that neighborhood. Yep. Hurrah. That was our first, that was our first time in New York. That was our first show up there. And I uh, saw in 1978, I saw suicide at Hurrah's. Wow. All right. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. So uh, that Sham Nine show was was um, it was they were okay. It was not what we expected, but it was cool. It was cool to see them, and yeah. we of course loved them. So when I was in Meyer Threat, I really wanted the singing. I wanted the great backing vocals, people singing along, um, and of course I wanted to you know I wanted people to. Uh, I had things to say. Was <laughs> was were the two seven inches recorded at the same time, or did you no. go in? You, you went in to, like. You went in to do in my eyes. You re you went in to record four tracks. We actually recorded two tracks. Um, wow. We the re we had written a bunch of songs. Um, the eight songs that were on the single, and then there was stand up. Right. Uh, one and, two X U. Uh, and one two X U. We were rec we had um, we had recorded those, but they were sort of kind of like on the on the shelf. Uh, and then the summer of 1981, we wrote Out of Step and In My Eyes. And um, we were uh, and we were breaking up. So it was like, let's just go record those two last songs. I see. So we went in and recorded the two last songs. And then once Lyle was gone, you know, we were discussing, well, how we should put this out. But it seemed like a ripoff to do a seven inch with just two songs on it. That I seems see. pretty straight. I but see. We, we had... We had, on our first demo, we had recorded Stepping Stone and Guilty of Being White, which never had come out. And Stepping Stone was, we, we had sort of recorded, not, we, everybody in DC, all the band, all the punk bands played Stepping Stone. Right. So I remember I called up Don Zentera. We never even mixed that track. You know, we just had a rough mix of it. So I called Don and said, can you put together another mix of that so we can, like, can you just do a mix of it? So we can send it to put on this record to on the B side. Mm -hmm. And he said, sure, come on over. You know, I, I went over there a couple of days later and he played me his mix. And it started out like this little tiny, tinny thing. And I couldn't, I thought I was confused by it. And then I just thought, oh, he's playing. This is a joke to him because I'm, I'm like, for me, I'm, I'm real literal. I was like, that's what the song was the song. And we're not doing any studio trickery, you know, but Don had done this really crazy mix. And, um, and I was furious with him. I actually yelled at him. I was like, what the fuck are you, you fucking with our music, you know? And then, but then he, uh, and then I thought about it and I was like, wait a minute, this is actually pretty cool. So that's the weird, that mix it's on the B side, that yeah. and Guilty Being White. Those right. are two songs we put on the B side just to make it a four song record instead of a two song record. 